Thank you, thank you. <laughs> How the kids carry it? Yeah, yeah, thanks. <laughs> oh damn, I didn't see you guys there. Welcome back to the end of the career mode roundup. The Reggae Boys Hall of Fame honors from 2019 to 2028. Now, these honors here are something I've been planning since the very start. You see? In England, we don't have a Hall of Fame um, venue, which which I think we should. And I think the Premier League are, implement, are gonna implement it. There's been talks about it. And um, so I thought I'd start it here. I don't know if any of the career, um, career YouTubers have done it, but this is my spin on it. Now, as you can see on the screen here, it says an award granted for excellence and achievements throughout the whole of the career mode. Now, because this is a road to glory clear career mode, I thought I'd make a little rule that you could only be below a starting, when, when we've started the save, you had to be below 75 overall um, to get into the honors. Because it wouldn't have been fair because you know Bailey, he would have just got straight in there and taken somebody else's spot that I think would have deserved it, you know what I'm saying? So, spoiler alert, Bailey isn't going to be in the Hall of Famer. Right, there's only going to be seven members. And why seven? Because seven is a good number. <laughs> there's been seven original Justice League members, seven Dragon Balls, I think there were seven Chaos Emeralds, and seven is well known as a lucky number. So there's only ever going to be seven Hall of Famers, and this is going to be something I'm going to do for every career mod I do in FIFA, hopefully anyway. We'll see how it turns out this one. So, Let's see who our honourable mention is going to be. Now, as you can see on the screen here, the honourable mention is Bobby Decrediva Reed. Strike compares striker and the left winger. Style of play on the right hand side, as you can see. It's quick off the mark, good dribbling skills, and a great finisher. Why is he the honourable mention, you might ask? As you can see, inconsistency at the highest level. As soon as we entered the Premier League in our fourth season in the career mode, in the series, he, you could see his decline. The championship was his peak, you see. And then he just, he wasn't making the same runs. He wasn't fast enough anymore. The defenders was on him like white on rice. And that is the reason why he can't be the starting 11, the starting 11, <laughs> the, the seven. The seven Justice League is <laughs> copyright. The seven Hall of Famers for the Reggae Boys here. But I just thought he deserved the honourable mention, so I'll put him right there. Right, our first Hall of Famer, Kimar Lawrence. What can I say about Kimar Lawrence? Before I get into him, let me explain what you're seeing on the screen right about now. Right? So everything on that left hand side of the screen speaks for itself. You got this picture, of course. You got the club that he played for throughout the whole, well, not throughout the whole career mode, but where he ended with us. You got his nationality on the bottom left, right? On the right hand side, you got his characteristics, what he was good at. And just because you're in the Hall of Fame doesn't mean you didn't have any weaknesses. It meant how to overcome those weaknesses. And his one weakness was crossing. He wasn't a good crosser, but he overcame that by being a good, by being pacey, cutting in, Passing to his next man and letting that next man shoot, that's how he overcame that. His style of play. Likes to stay close to the attacker. Very good. Very good at doing that. As soon as the attacker tries to skill moves, he's there. He's ready to get it. Likes to stick a foot in as well. And he also likes to win aerial juice. You, you know how, much, how high this guy jumps. Like an NBA player, in the air, hanging there just to get that ball out of play. That's what I love about this guy here. Right. Now, in the middle here, at the top, you got his name, obviously you know his name. The season he joined, he joined season three for us. He was a marquee signing of season three, actually. Now, his age there, it says 29. He wasn't 29 when he joined, but that's when he hit his peak, and I'll explain that a bit later. Positions, left back, left wing back. His height is 5'10". His initial value is five million. His prime value was five million, because it, obviously, because we got him at a later stage, right? He didn't really grow. So, that stayed the same. Preferred left, um, preferred foot, left footed. Uh, initial overall 74, prime overall 75. So he, he grew one. Right, so, 
at the bottom in the center here, we've got the statistics room. Now it's took me a long time to do this, you could probably tell. A very long time. But let me explain it, and you've also got a key at the bottom right for what they mean. So apps at the top, at the top left of the um, graph means appearances, for those that you don't know. PRC means my personal rating of the competition itself, right? So, and DCM means defensive contributions per match. Now that is your clearances and your interceptions combined to the match itself, to how many appearances he's made in the competition, right? So, I know for defenders it would usually be um, blocks, tackles, um, interceptions and clearances, but Blocks and tackles, the kind the kind of hard to you know to separate all those four. So blocks and tackles and interceptions are in the same um, graph I've got on here. Right? And clearances are obviously when a ball's coming in from across, you just head that out or bicycle kick it out, whatever you want to do. Right, so the numbers in Italian, as you can see, Dan the DMC, the defensive contribution to a match, that means that. I've rounded them up and what I mean by that is when you add the clearances interceptions and then divide that by the appearances you get a number and then that's obviously the number that's that's the amount of times that he's made an interception per game so 0 0.4 0 0.5 so an average every two games he makes an interception and whatnot I've rounded that up simply because obviously we've simmed a lot of games throughout the series and throughout the series there's no way to tell how many interceptions, how many clearances, you know, how many tackles you've made in the sim. So, for defenders only, I've put that in there and I've just rounded it up to the next uh, 0.5 value so it's easier to see what I mean. So, as you can see here, his best competition um, was actually the Europa League, even though he only had a DCM of 0.65. And I rated that as an 8 simply because he had 11 games and he performed well in all 11 of them, really. And I couldn't fault him for that. But I've got to, I've got to say, his Premier League, he was consistent throughout. Very, very consistent. 51 of, um, interceptions, 21, 25 clearances in it, 111. I can't, even, I can't even say what's on the screen. In 113 appearances. A very, very consistent player. And one that I will not forget. Right now, that's not it for him. We have now got his highlight reel, <laughs> and we've I've come from, I've, um, I've put together all of these good defensive. I think there's some assists in there as well, and then you'll see what he does in the assists. So let's play that now.
And there you go. Highlight reel. <laughs> that was great. My favourite ones was one, one at the start, the clearance against Hill Huddersfield, the overhead clearance, that was brilliant. And that last ditch tackle at the end towards Liverpool, that was great. Now the things I'll tell you about the highlight reels are, I couldn't fit everything in there that they've ever done. I do apologise for that because the highlight reels would have been ages, ages. So I've made them, I think, three to four minutes each long. And um, what that composed of is from season one, if you've joined in season one, of course, all the way till I think season six, mid season six. And then I've had to cut out from season six to the end of season seven. The end of season seven is when we've won the FA Cup. So I've made sure I've put in the last episode of the end of season seven. And then I have cut out halfway through season eight for some of them as well, the first half. And then I've put in the last half because obviously the last half of season eight was when we won the Champions League. I left it out for him because obviously he wasn't he wasn't a contender anymore in the Champions League. Orgel was, and um, so that's it for him. Right. So without further ado, let me show you the next Hall of Famer. The next Hall of Famer is Joel Orgel. <laughs> Mind the picture I put up there because he's a region. There's no stock picture online to take off and put in there to make it appropriate. So I've just had to, I've had to take a picture of my phone of him at the game and try and edit it out the best I can and put that in there for you. So do mind the picture. But if any of you know of any way to get stock photos of regen players or, you know, non-real players on the game, then let me know. Cause that's something we might need in the future, you know, depending if they're good enough to enter the Hall of Fame, of course. Right, so as you can see here, his prime age is 27. Now, I personally think he could have even gone up um, while at 27, but we didn't play season 9. Uh, no, sorry, we didn't play season 10. We ended it at season 9. So I think he still had room to grow. His prime overall was 86. I reckon he could go up to about 88, but we'll never know. <laughs> um, his prime value was 69 million. His initial value was 275k. What a growth that he's had. He's, he can play centre back. Now, what I love about him, he's 5 foot 11. But it, yes, he was beat in the air a couple of times, but not enough to not make this list. He makes this list because he can overcome his weakness, as I was saying about Kimar Lawrence. His weaknesses were defending crosses and his heights. And how he overcame those with his positioning. You know, get to the back of the defender and look a bit. And, um, <laughs> and to be honest, another way he overcame those was his partners that I put him with. You see, I always put him with a tall partner. Um, Michael Hector was the first of that. He was 6'6", six, six, no 6'4", six, I think. And obviously he was able to get onto crosses a lot easier. So the positioning of his partners was um, worked well with him. And his next partner was mid clearly. And he was 6'6". Six, six, so that worked well. Style of play. Likes to stay close to the attackers just like Kimar Lawrence and I noticed with him he likes to lunge in right and when he lunges in it doesn't really cause fouls I've noticed he gets the ball a lot of the times so that's a, that's good for him and right I mean look at his table here honestly phenomenal phenomenal statistics right look at this here 102 interceptions and 60 clearances in 197 appearances in the Premier League that is amazing. Um, so, um, his defensive contributions that co correlates to um, 0.85. So pretty much that that would be what of every 110 minutes that he's played, he makes an interception, he makes a clearance, something like that. That's why I've gave him a nine rating in the Premier League and in the Europa League, really good as well. 0.8 defensive contributions in the Champions League, one defensive contribution per game. He was guaranteed to make at least one tackle, one interception, one clearance every single game. That's why I've given him a 9.5 in that competition, right? Overall rating is an eight. And that's only that low simply because he wasn't good in the FA Cup, the League Cup and the promotion playoffs. He didn't, he wasn't showing his worth in those three competitions. But all in all, I decided to give him an eight because 
obviously those are the three competitions that are weaker compared to Europa League, Champions League and Premier League. So they decided to pump that up a little bit and give him an A. So this is now Joel's highlight reel. I hope you enjoy it. What a highlight reel that was. That goal line clearance against Burnley and those two last ditch tackles against Liverpool. Amazing. Absolutely amazing. Joel Orgel. I also put it, as you can probably tell, his Champions League, um, how he helped us win the Champions League at the end of the video. I'll always put their best season or competitions at the end of the video. And I thank Joel Orgel for all he's done for this club. It's been amazing. Right, so now we will see who the next Hall of Famer is. The third Hall of Famer, Avlis Powell. Did you expect anything else? He was our captain for, what was it? We played nine seasons. I think he was our captain from the second season onwards. So eight seasons. Well, seven and a half because I changed captain halfway through the last season to the cell because I thought he deserved it. And he was dropping off as well, so. But Avlis Powell, an amazing captain throughout the whole series. 
27 at his peak, played right back, six foot tall, prime value was 4.5 million, and prime overall was 74. He never played like a 74 player. Let's try an 88 rated player. I'm not, I'm not bullshitting you guys. That's exactly how he played. And he's got the statistics to back it up. The best statistics we've seen of a player in the Hall of Fame as of yet. Strengths, interceptions, sprint speed, quick off the mark, ready to go down there. Weaknesses was his positioning, but because he had good sprint speed, he could get back in time. Style of play, likes to play long balls, likes to dribble. And then we come to his statistics, as I said earlier. These, these statistics, oh my gosh, where do I start? I'll start at his weakest statistic, which wasn't even weak, because it's 0.8 defensive contributions per match. 0.8 in the Premier League where we played the most games 170 appearances 103 interceptions 27 clearances I, I, what, what I will say about all the defensive people in the Hall of Fame is don't take notice of their clean sheets because I guarantee if I had a better goalkeeper for this whole career mode the clean sheets would have looked a lot better than this because the problem was never really with my defenders but with the goalkeepers so I gave him a personal rating in the Premier League of 8.75 because it speaks for itself. FA Cup, 0.95 defensive contributions per match. 13 interceptions, two clearances in 16 appearances. League Cup, three interceptions in four appearances. Playoff, um, playoff promotions. Now, as you can see for the promotions, I didn't really talk about Pau throughout the promotions and I always say one of my catchphrases on this channel is if I don't talk about you that means you're doing something good <laughs> you know what I mean it's when you're messing up that I notice you and I start talking about you and he had three interceptions one clearance in four appearances in the playoff and finals of season two and season three when we was in them that's a defensive contribution per match 9.75 personal rating from me. Interceptions in the draw per league, six, two clearances as well in nine appearances. 0.9 defensive contributions per match. 9.5 rating. Now, this is the one where I just, I had to double check I got my figures right on this when I was calculating it all because this was amazing. 21 appearances in the Champions League, 26 interceptions, seven clearances that means he had 1.6 dcm and i gave him a personal rating of 10. thinking about it i should have gave him a personal rating of 11. he should have broke the barrier he should have broke the sound barrier like sonic <laughs> because that oh, i ain't seen that before uh, that that is something else and the only way i can sum up how he is is with his total personal rating at 9.25 and that's only let down by the league cup at 8 if that was a high 8 I probably would have given him a 9.75 I, I can't say anything but here's his highlight reel this guy is going to be our next captain next season when Austin retires because he just holds it down like he doesn't make many mistakes this guy let's have a bit of fun till I downfall my love if you feel like I do right now don't say you're on the run to the other side my love Hey
What I didn't say about highlights earlier, what I don't think I said anyway, was no season 9 highlights in there, because that's a season I want to forget. <laughs> and as I said, I couldn't put that many highlights in there anyway, so I thought I'll cut that season out entirely, because it was embarrassing, so nobody needs to be remembered of that one. But without further ado, let's now see our fourth Hall of Famer, Giovanni Brown. Now, if I'm telling you the truth, he was struggling to get in here with another one of our players that I won't mention until it's over. <laughs> but I've put him in for one reason and one reason only. If you look at the top right, characteristic strength, what's number one? Clutchness. What's his nickname? Tracy McGrady. He's in here for one competition and one competition only. Promotion playoffs in season two and season three. If you think that's unfair, F you. No, I'm joking. <laughs> I can understand why some of you would think it was unfair. But you've got to remember, we would have never progressed in this career mode so fast. Remember, we got promoted every season. We would have never got promoted in season two and season three if it wasn't for this guy. He's his ratio in the promotion playoffs speaks for itself. Three goals, three assists, five appearances. 1.2 GCM, that's goal contribution per match now that we're on attackers. Rating, personal rating from me, 10 out of 10. Again, I should have put 11 because that should have been it. He should have broke the sound barrier. But his arguments against him, towards every other competition. I made a mistake on the Champions League, so I'll cut that out. <laughs> it actually says 1.57 GCM, where it should say 0.57 GCM. <laughs> that is my bad, that's why he's got a 5 rating next to it. I was like, yo, what? How has he scored that many goals in the Champions League? I know it was trash. But every other competition, he was below par. The only one that even came close to his promotion playoffs was his Europa League, and that wasn't even close, that was 0.4 GCM. FA Cup was 0.38, and the Premier League, he was woeful pretty much at 0.27. Now, the other argument you can have that goes in his favour is he was a bench player primarily. Prim primarily? <laughs> I can't even say the word, but you know what I mean. In 119 appearances in the Premier League, he probably came off the bench 60% of that time, so about 65 games, nearly 70 games he came off the bench, you know what I mean? So, 
same for every other competition. The only ones that he really started in was the promotion playoffs where he proved himself. Most of the FA Cup games where he has a better GCM and some of the League Cup games as well. Right, his style of play, he was good at dribbling. Very good at dribbling. He likes to play short passes and he was great. When I say great, I mean great on the counter-attack. This guy was just... I don't think he had amazing sprint speed, but he just knew where to be on that counter-attack. Prime overall was 71. He grew 6 from his original position um, overall. Prime value was 2.3 million. Bargain. Dixie's chicken bargain. Hot wings bargain. That's what I'm talking about. Age 27. Height 5 foot 9. He was short and nippy. And he could play three different positions um, attacking midfielder, left mid, and striker. There's nothing more to say, but this is his highlight reel. Out there. As you can see, I put his playoff performances at the end of the video. Because if anything deserves Naruto silhouette to music, that does. <laughs> I thank you for all you've done, Giovanni Brown. And I'm sad to see you go, man. I'm sad. Right. Are you ready to see the next Hall of Famer? The fifth Hall of Famer? Peter Leverson. What can I say about him? He is our highest grower. I think he was our highest grower with 27th growth from his initial overall. Started at 60, ended at 87 in his prime. At 28 years old, his prime value was 74 million. I think in our last episode, Dortmund actually came in with a 108 million bid. Look at his strengths. 
passing, dribbling, finishing. I'll put finishing up there because it was 99 in the stats even though it wasn't 99 in game. Positioning and interceptions. His only weakness was his set pieces. Free kicks and penalties, he was just woeful in his set. What I will say about him is he's not on this, he's not in the Hall of Fame for his goals to only traits. He's in the Hall of Fame for every other reason under the sun. He is. He was a good interceptor, as I've put up there. He was good at passing and he was great in the assists as well. As you can see, his goal contribution per match in the Premier League was 0.45. Let me put that into perspective for you guys. 0.45 goal contribution per match. What did I always tout him as? The next Yaya Torre. I've personally checked Yaya Torre's stats in the Premier League alone and he has 0.34 goal contributions per match. He surpassed the guy, the mantle I gave to him. He surpassed it. 9.25 personal rating in the league. FA Cup, three assists, three goals, six contributions in 18 appearances. Decent, not great, but decent. That's why he got seven off me. League Cup was woeful, but he only played five games, so I gave him a five overall in that one, so fair enough. Promotion playoffs, he, was, he wasn't he was the main man. He played all six games, but he was never the main man, so he's got a 5.5 for that. Only had one goal across the six games. Now, this is where another part of his game where he took shine. He loved European competition. Europa League, 0.9 goal contributions per match. 0.9 with four goals, five, sorry, five goals, four assists in nine appearances. 8.75 rating. Amazing. And then he won up stats in the Champions League. Four goals, 10 assists. 11 interceptions, that is 0.73 goal contributions per match and remember he played more games so even though it says he won up that and he had better defensive contributions per match with 0.6 as well because he had so many interceptions so it's a 9.5 after Champions League. This guy style of play likes to play long passes he could fizz the ball over the top to the strikers to the wingers like to play short passes he could pass to his centre mid partner whether that be Johnson throughout the years whether that be um, who else did we put there McClearly as well when we slotted him in whether that be Parks who used to sit next to him as well any of them like to play short passes with them and also very just like Brown very very dang dangerous on the counter attack let's let's use his highlight reel to speak for itself
Thank you for Peter Lee Russell. You came in clutch when it mattered in the Champions League. You saw the highlights. You know he did. Right. Are you ready for the sixth Hall of Famer? Rashawn Daly, number six. What can I say about him? Got him early. Got him season one, of course. He's always been able to play striker in camp. He was competing with roles in the early career mode, in the early start of it, as a striker. And then I realised he can play camp. He didn't have the best stats to play there with his passing and, not, and such, and his stamina in particular. <laughs> as you can see on his weakness, I'll put that number one. But he still flourished there. And I, I thank him for that. Went up, he had a growth by 20. Started at 60, went to a prime overall of 80. He, um, prime value was 27 million. His strengths were finishing, definitely, and passing. Even though he didn't say so in his stats, he made a lot of assists, which will come to later. Style of play, likes to play long passes, likes to play short passes. One, two play. I'll get to more of that later as well. 195 appearances in the Premier League, 68 goals, 78 assists. That's a, that's 0.75 goal contributions a game. So again, every 120 minutes, he was guaranteed to at least either score or assist. 8.5 rating from me. FA Cup, five goals, six assists in 14 appearances, 0.8 goal contribution per match, 8.75. League Cup, uh, we only played four games in that, so I'll let him off with that one. <laughs> Promotion playoffs. Now, when I went back and reviewed the footage and looked at my notes, I didn't know that he had two assists in two games in the promotion playoffs. He was injured for the whole of the third season promotion playoffs, so who knows what he would have done there, but I did give him a 9.75 because that is a goal contribution every game. The only reason I didn't give him a 10 is because he didn't score, and I thought, you know, he was playing as a striker then probably, so. It's probably more valuable with goals, but you know, still a great, obviously, personal score from me. Europa League, four goals, three assists in 11 appearances. It's decent, very decent. It's a personal from me. And one of his best competitions was the Champions League. Six goals, 10 assists in 19 appearances. A 0.84 goal contribution per match. Nine personal rating from me. He just, he exceeded my expectations because I know earlier in the career mode I complained a lot of him being slow <laughs> and he definitely was slow, I'm not going to take that back, <laughs> you know what I mean, like he was running like this man, like come on now, but he still, even though he was a bit slow, he did game sprint speed over the time with me training it of course and he was a deadly finisher and a deadly assister, as you'll see now in his highlight reel. Pull my heart out of my chest, train my mind so I forget. Sink your teeth into my bones, dig me out, then fill the hole. Tell me apart.
breathe you in Swallow down your jacket sin Let it drown inside my veins The sweetest poison I could take You make it an art The way that you scar with every word But before we reach the end Strip me down again Come and get it one more time oh. If you wanna lose your mind oh. Come and get it one more time oh. If you wanna lose your mind oh. Come and get it What a player. And watching that highlight again just made me realise how much he could finish. Didn't care how hard he hit him, just hit him. Come like Mike Tyson, just hit him. Jumps up while he hits him, man. <laughs> Sean Daly, I thank you. I thank you for your service. Right. The seventh Hall of Famer. Do you really think I wasn't going to get this guy in the Hall of Fame after all he's done for us? You can guess who it is, unless you haven't been watching from the start. You didn't even need to be watching from the start to guess who this is. He has performed from season one to season nine. It is Hakeem Rose. There's no words to say what I want to say for Hakeem Rose. Let's start from the top down. Season one, he joined. Strike, um, position he could play, striker, right winger. Not great on the right wing. He's a nat natural born finish. Well, I say he's a natural born funny finisher. He always has been for me. Height, five foot nine, short, nippy. Prime value, 33.5 million. Initial value, 126 grand. Initial overall, 55. Prime overall, 81. <laughs> Strength, finishing. Acceleration, sprint speed. Weaknesses. Now he had a lot of weaknesses. I put these down here. Strength, skill moves, weak foot, aerial dues. But what did I say earlier? The Hall of Fame is about identifying your weaknesses and overcoming those. And he did. He did because his style of play was a counter-attack. That that helps a lot with this with um without having no you know skill moves. Because when it's a counter-attack, you rely on your speed more than anything else. You know, you're gonna have the defender. <laughs> you're gonna have the defender slipping and tripping. That's what you want just by your raw speed. 99 sprint speed. Like to cut inside. Even if it meant using his right foot, he had a two-star right foot. But I've still scored some bangers with them. You know, with the finesse. Outside of the boot shot. He should have had that on his traits. I don't know why he didn't develop a trait for it because he's banged a couple on the, on the outside of his boot. I saw him. One, two play. A lot with Dali. A lot with Vassell. One, two play. I'll give you the ball, you give me back. I'll shoot straight away, get it in the top corner. Now, for his all important, all important statistics. Now, let me tell you something, right? 197 appearances in the Premier League, 127 goals. Do you know where that puts him in the all-time top goal scorers? It puts him above Robbie Keane, right? Above Nicholas Anelka, above Dwight York, Steven Gerrard, Lukaku, and Ian Wright with 127 goals. And he would have got a lot more if it wasn't for season nine. Because we was popping up at the start of season nine and I had to see the rest because I knew I was going to get destroyed if I played them all. He probably would have had 140 which would have put him above Van Persie. It would have put him above, no, sorry, it would have put him still below Van Persie, but it would have put him above Harry Kane as well. He also had 84 assists to those 127 goals. That made him have a goal contribution of 1.07 goals per game. My personal rating, 10, should have been 11, again. FA Cup, 
12 goals, 6 assists in 15 appearances, 1.2 goal contributions per game, 10. League Cup was his only competition that he was poor in, and he only played two games. <laughs> so I gave him a 6, because he only played two games. Promotion playoff. Next to Brown, he was our most important player in the promotion playoffs. Four goals, five appearances. 9.75 rating. Reopa League, six goals, four assists. In 11 appearances. 0.91 goal contribution per match. 10 out of 10. And finally, I just, I could, I had to, again, I had to check these stats. I had to check them. 19 appearances in the Champions League. 21 goals, 7 assists, that means he had a goal contribution in 1.47 game goals per match. But what can you say? But 10 out of 10. What can you say? My personal rating, 10 out of 10. Because I can't fault him for the League Cup, he only had two games, he had nothing to prove himself. That was just, it was something else. And there's no better way to end this Reggae Boys Hall of Fame statistics without having Hakeem Rose's highlight reel. No, there ain't no stopping us. Blow without boarding pass. Couldn't catch me, I'll be moving fast. Call me a shooting star. Let them know who you are. Flying up in a bar. Wish on a star.
scheme roles. What a player. And the talisman of this club. Alright, so that is it for the Hall of Famers. Seven Hall of Famers. Kimar Lawrence, Avlis Powell, Giovanni Brown, Joel Orgel, Hakeem Rose, Rashawn Daly, and Peter Levesseur. Thank you all for the memories that you've made here. And on my first ever series on YouTube, thank you. But that is it for, it's not it for the video, <laughs> but it is it for the Hall of Famers. We're now at the Bun & Cheese award ceremonies. Now this award ceremony is for anybody and everybody in the career mode. So it doesn't need to be anybody below 75 rating at the start. It can be for anybody. So our first ever award is for Grandma Saturday Soup Award. That's what it's called. And why is it Grandma Saturday Soup? Because it's the most consistent Jamaican food that you can have, <laughs> right? <laughs> so it is for the most consistent player. Who comes in number three? Joel Orgel. I apologise for the picture again. <laughs> but he was easily the most consistent, one of the most consistent players. You saw all his statistics. You saw how many times he headed the ball out when he was right in danger. Gets the bronze medal because this guy, I appreciate him for what he's done for us. But he's still not top two. He came rolls. I bet you're surprised to see him at number two. You thought he was number one, didn't you? I did too before I had some thinking. Goals for days. Assists for days. But this guy fell short of the mark for the number one winner, Atlas Powell. He's even got the award of the seven Dragon Balls. He can make ever wish any wish that he wants. Because he, there, was, there was seven Hall of Famers, so I thought, you know, let's keep the theme going with seven Dragon Balls. That's his award. Abdus Powell. His statistics in the defence was everything. You know what Alex Ferguson used to say? Defence is everything, man. That, that's what wins your trophies, defence. And that's what I've got to thank him for, our captain, who just picked the award above Hakeem Rolls. Which I didn't think was possible, but he has done. The next award is for the Fried Dumpling Special Award. Because Fried Dumpling is my favourite snack, so it's my favourite player. Who's my favourite player? No, in number three comes Kimar Lawrence. You know what I've said? He was fast. Positioned himself well. Intercepted, lunged in, intercepted well. Comes number three. He usually had a game face, which was nice to see. I think he was one of my first players with a game face. <laughs> Uh, that was nice to see. Oh, I don't think Dec actually Deco Diva Reed might have had one, but he's not, he's not on here. He's, he's not in, involved here anymore. Hakeem Rose num gets the number two spot again. He's thinking, man, what is this, this is the Ballon d'Or? I can never win it, man. But th there's nothing more to say about him. He's goals for days, assists for days, and uh, he was just a joy to play with. I'm just I'm disappointed he could only get to an 81. I thought he had more, you know, pace and steam than that. Should have got a lot higher than that. But my favourite player is, I don't know if you've guessed him, Leon Bailey. Now, the last season, that, that was a write-off for everybody. <laughs> everybody. We don't talk about the last season. I didn't enjoy him in the last season, but from see, because we got him in season seven, the whole of season seven, the whole of season eight, I loved him. He was just great to play. It was great to have somebody with good skill moves a week for, for once. You could do a roulette, you could do inside, but you could, you know. You could do anything you wanted to, and he was quick as well. The only problem he had was his composure in front of goal. Even though he had 70 plus composure in his stats, didn't feel like it, but he was just so great to move around and play with. That's why he gets the master ball as the number one place prize. Right, the last award and the most important award, the most prestigious award of this whole series is the Bun and Cheese Award. Best partnership. Now, I've never explained this before, but you might have asked or wondered where the Bun and Cheese name comes from. Comes from a friend. Bun and Cheese, if you don't know, if you're not Jamaican, is a specialty, is a specialty. You have a snack, you know. This people, well, you probably know cheese. <laughs> I'll, I'll be surprised if you don't know cheese, but uh, you put that in there and it's the best combination ever. And then my friend once says, man, you 
best combination ever. We got jokes, you know, we got mad jokes, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> we got mad jokes, so this is me and your bun and cheese, and that name's always stuck with me. That's why I've named the channel Bun and Cheese, and that's why this is the best partnership award and the most prestigious award of the channel. Third place, best partnership, Joe Orgo, Michael Hector. Now, now you might be wondering, why don't I put me clearly there instead? Michael Hector, in his heyday on the channel, he was amazing. But in his low day, that's when you, that's when you, boom. Now, McClee was just, you know, he was decent throughout. He never had a heyday, <laughs> you know what I mean? He was just there like that. Michael Hector did, that's why he's here. And Joel all they complimented each other. Height, you know, one, one was decent height, the other one was tall, and then you went to come in and go together. And it was a shame that Michael Hector was a lot older. I think if he was younger, his ratings would have stayed the same and he wouldn't have had such a decline. That was his problem, I think. But the clinch of third spot for the third best partnership in the career mode. Number two, I was struggling to pick number two. But I gave it to Kim Rose and Peter Lee Vassell. You probably noticed in both of their highlight reels that they had, they interchanged a lot of assists and goals between each other. And that's why the number two, the, you know, Peter Lee Vassell knew when to put it over the top, when to short passes to rolls and you know, the just, the gel well really really nice together and the, the, the reason I put them ahead of I was thinking of Peter Lee Vassell and Dali because I think that actually had more combined assists and goals than Peter Lee Vassell and Gary Dali that's why they're there so who's going to clinch the most prestigious award? you probably guessed it it's not hard but it is Hakeem Rose and Rashawn Dali you know their partnership was so great, I thought, in their highlight reels, I cannot put any assists and goals they've made together in the highlight reels. I've got to do a separate highlight reel for them, just for this award. Their prizes are from Naruto, The Executioner's Blade and Samahada. <laughs> because the killers, one swipe and everybody's down from these guys, the killers, right? And the only thing I can say is, you can just watch their highlight reel now. Their combined highlight reel to see how good they actually were together. Roll it.
Rolls. Rolls. <laughs> and as you can see there, that's their partnership. And that's why they come number one. It's the end of the video. And uh, this has took a while to make. I've been making it since the start of the career mode. Jotting down statistics and everything. And um, I hope you enjoyed it because um, I did. I will be back tomorrow or the day after. I, I haven't worked it out yet. With a teaser for the next um, video, for the next series. We'll have one last series and then I might do something different. So, um, the only thing I can say is, till next time.